Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and we have a selection of weird looking spheres in front of us. These were all created procedurally with just a handful of mesh operations, uh, but more importantly, they were created with procedural selection techniques, and that's something Moto's actually really good at, but it hasn't really been explored very much, I don't think, in terms of creating just sort of fun procedural geometry, so that's what this tutorial is about. We're going to start with this guy over here and create that, and all these other ones are just sort of variations. Um, on this initial one, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. We're also going to take an existing selection alias, or which is essentially a selection assembly that was created with um, some built in selection modifiers that Moto comes with, and then we're going to modify that and save out a new uh, type of selection assembly that's going to help us create this shape. So that's what we're going to cover. Uh, first, let's take a look at some renders to see if we can uh, get excited about this. Alrighty, here's all the spheres rendered out in the wonderful Octane Renderer at uh, dazzling 4K resolution. Let me just push in a little bit here. Here's this initial sphere. There's actually one instanced and placed inside of it, which is pretty cool. And then, yeah, just a variation on that and another variation on that one. And here's one with a few texture falloffs mixed into the procedural modeling to make it look more organic. And there's, there's a lot of places you could go with that. And then this last one here is, is, again, it has some procedural selection operations that use falloffs and textures to do some deleting of components. And you come up with something interesting like that. All of these are really cool, though. I really, really like this one. It reminds me of these old Haeckel drawings. This guy named Haeckel, who was a fantastic artist who did a lot of drawings of sea creatures uh, back in the day. Look him up on the internet. I think H-A-E-C-K-E-L, something like that. But I think the diatoms, maybe, those are the ones, the little delicate uh, sea creatures that create chalk and things like that that we use. But he did some really cool drawings, and this sort of shape reminded me of that. And this is a really, oh, this is a really close-up view of it, so... And man, does Octane do a nice job with depth of field. I mean, seriously, look at that. Uh, there's a close-up of that gold one with these, you know, hexagrams. Hexagrams? Hexagrams, I think so. <laughs> uh, sort of extruded in like that. Um, this one reminds me of coral a little bit. You can probably create some cool procedural coral like this and do some more procedural modeling to vary the size of these polygons there. Um, there's that weird one that looks like a virus you probably don't want to get. Again, it was just trying to create something a little more natural looking with this particular uh, version of the sphere. And then this last uh, metallic one here looks kind of cool. And then maybe there's some cool um, animation you could do with that by increasing and, decrease and decreasing the length of the uh, stock on these sort of nail-like structures uh, to music or something like that. It seems like a cool animation idea. But anyway, let's jump in and look at this uh, first guy over here. Or more, yeah, this guy right here and uh, start modeling. Here we are back in Moto, and I think the best way to go about this is to make this guy here on the left from scratch, and then maybe walk through these, uh, the modifier stack here on these guys. So you can see how they're really they're just variations on this first one that we made, and you can you know do whatever you want with them once you sort of get to that point. So why don't I hide all this stuff and then press in for a shiny new empty mesh item. I'm going to rename that to Holy Sphere Batman. Why not? And add a sphere primitive right there. And I don't want this uh, this type of sphere primitive. I actually want a tessellation. I'm going to bump that up to a subdiv level of, say, 3. So it's all made of triangles there, looking pretty good. And then the next thing I do is I add a subdivide operator. So just subdivide. And it defaults to Catmull Clark, which is fine. You can also do SDS subdivide. You don't want faceted and you don't want smooth. We do want SDS or Catmull Clark because these give us these cool um, hexagon hexagons and pentagons right here. So we have hexagons and pentagons, and that's what we're going to use to create this uh, cool sort of uh, sphere structure procedurally. Now, this brings us to the most important part of this whole operation and also sort of the biggest roadblock because there's no real built-in way to do what we need to do next. We need to make a tool to do it for us. What we need to do is delete all of these edges here on the inside of these uh, polygons to make nice, clean, you know, pentagons and hexagons. And the way to do that is we need to find, you know, we need to do this procedurally, right? So we need to find some sort of set of rules that allows us to do this. And one way to do that is to look at these vertices in the middle here, the sort of um, hub of these spokes. Here's a vertice connected to uh, six edges, sort of six spokes, and here's a vertice connected to 
uh, five edges, whoops, not polygons, five edges. And if you think about it, we can you know, use that as a starting point. So we can select these guys in the middle like that, and then we can grow our selection, and then we can convert that selection uh, to edges and then delete those edges, leaving us nice clean um, hexagons and pentagons, right? So that's our plan. We just have to execute this over here in the modeling stack. So first thing is add a delete operator. And that's just going to delete the whole shebang right there and set this to edge. And then we need to come up with a selection operation that will allow us to select those vertices in the middle there. So we need a rule that will select all vertices that are connected to five or six edges. And if we're lucky, one will just exist here that will let us select edges uh, or vertices by edge count. And uh, it's conspicuously missing. <laughs> it's just not here. First of all, about um, selection operations. Uh, I need to point out that under new, you have all these selection operations here. These are all sort of, I guess, compiled is what you'd call them. But you also have a selection assemblies, which do the same thing. They just select uh, components by rules. So here we have, you know, select by patterns or select by index or select by polygon tag. In these assemblies, we have really useful things like select ran random or select triangle polygons. Uh, these are just assemblies with math nodes and conditional nodes and these nodes right here that are all sort of wired together to make something useful, right? So they're just tools built with other simpler tools. And we're gonna use one of these, we're gonna modify one of these to get what we want. So I don't see a select edge or select vertice by edge count, but I do see select polygons by edge count. So I'm gonna start with that. And so we can uh, double click that and it should show up over here in our list. And if I close my uh, uh, add operation stack here, you'll notice that the entire sphere is gone <laughs> because basically all the polygons in here have at least you know zero or four edges or uh, edges on them, so they're all selected and they're all deleted. Um, what I want to do is is hide the or eyeball off the delete, so we're not deleting anything, but we can at least see what we're going to be selecting here. And I need my schematic for this. So I'm gonna up my schematic and look for my workspace. I've got a lot of uh, octane shaders in here. That's why there's so many workspaces. Um, and I need to bring this delete uh, operation down here. So add selected, here's my delete. And if I double click the yellow diamond, I see my holy sphere Batman, my sphere here. And the diamond for the selection operation will be this guy right here. And that's our uh, select polygons by edge count alias. And what you can do with an alias is it's all collapsed to make it sort of user friendly and, and the only inputs it gives us is minimum and maximum edge count for the selection. But because it's an alias, I can do this little trick here where I right click on it and say expand to assembly and it just expands out that alias to the assembly and I can dig in here and see how this was built. All right, now let's see if I can describe this assembly in a coherent manner. Hopefully I can. Uh, at the heart of it is this selection operator right here this polygon selection operator is the same one you would find in this drop down list right here and it has all kinds of useful channels to select polygons by a set of rules so if i select this guy you'll notice that's yellow here and blue here that means it's the same node we just ripped off the vertex count channel and moved it to the left so we have a nice left to right flow uh, winding up at the select channel here so if you look at the channels of this uh, node it has all sorts of useful stuff like normal direction position index uh, area flatness and also vertex count. Also this select channel here which tells the node which polygons to select. And on this end we've got a couple of user values, right? Minimum edge count and maximum edge count. In our case we're going to uh, set a couple of things here. We got zero and three. So uh, zero and three, those two numbers are going to be fed to this node right here. And really this is just a sort of a sorting node. Sometimes you can put, you know, minimum you know, you may mess up while you're actually working in Moto and put, you know, a large number here, like minimum of 16, maximum of three. That doesn't make sense. So this node will just uh, sort that out. It'll grab the larger number of the two and feed it over here. And then we'll feed the smaller number over here. And each of these have a value A coming from the selection operator. And so what we have is a set of, a sort of a comparison program going on here. Both of these nodes are gonna do some comparing. They're going to compare the minimum here, or I'm sorry, the maximum number, which is which is three. So any polygon with three vertices, and this will compare the, the minimum number of zero. 
And what this operation does, it'll loop through every single one of these polygons. So this polygon, then this polygon, then this polygon, then this polygon, and it's gonna compare it twice. It'll say, okay, well, if it has less than or equal to three vertices or three or less vertices, it's gonna take the, that polygon's index or identifier and feed it over to this node. And this one will take the minimum number. So if this polygon has greater than or equal to zero vertices, which would be all of them, it's also going to send all of those indexes over to this node. And then this node will compare these two sets, all the indexes from three or less and all the indexes, all the polygon indexes from zero or greater. And it's going to take the values that meet both criteria. So it has to be three or less, also zero or greater. So all of them are zero or greater, but not all of them are three or less. And so it takes you know that smaller subset and feeds it over to the select operation channel and all of those polygons will be selected. So let's put this into operation before we change this up a little bit. Uh, when you when we collapse or expanded this into an assembly, this just a little note here, this little graph um, line, this little graph node here became disconnected. I don't know if that's a bug, but it should always be connected to this assembly output so we could hook it back up. So if I if it's not connected, I have no way to hook this thing uh, back up to this selection here. So we got to go back in here and make sure this selection operation actually has an output, a graph output connection there. So when we um, go over here to our node, we can actually connect that up like that. So let's just see how this works. Let's um, turn delete back on and it's not doing anything. So it's set to delete any polygon that has a count of zero to three edges. And as you see, all the polygons in here have, you know, four edges, one, two, three, four, right? So I need to bump this up of zero to four and it kills them all. So our assembly is working. We just need to change this. So we're not dealing with polygons. We actually want to select vertices by edge count versus polygons by edge count, right? So let's dig back in here and change that because we know that we have a selection. Where's my selection? nodes we want to go here to the selection operator vertex versus polygon so we're going to swap out our uh, polygon selection operator with a vertex selection op operator and over here in channels we want select by edge count so i'm just going to drag that in and then i'm going to right click and uh do that really quick let me just do slow here separate channel and drag that over here just like this is there and drag the selection part over here just like this and really we're just going to swap these out so instead of um, doing vertex count on a polygon, we're going to do edge count on a vertex and just hook these up just like this. Replace that one there and replace that one there. Looking good. I can uh, get rid of that guy now, I think. Let me just put that there and delete this guy. Boom. And hook this back up. Like, Make sure to hook up the uh, graph connection to the output. All right, let's pop back up to the workspace and hook everything up and see what we got. So gonna hook that up there I'm actually gonna rename this uh, whoops don't double click there if you sort of double click double click double click or click and hold or whatever it is um, you can rename that to select vertices by edge count because that's what we're doing now and for our delete uh, node let's set it to vertex for now and you'll see what it's doing if I remember here we've got zero and three selected or uh, inputted, and it's deleting um, vertices uh, that have zero to three connecting edges. But we want five or six like that. So that's, we don't want to delete those polygons. We want to delete the edges. So we have to do a little more work here. So right now we have those vertices selected. And you can actually, if you click there, you can see that those are selected. If I add another selection um, operator, I can do the grow shrink one. And we'll just grow that by one. You can see now we've expanded to these all these vertices. And then we want to convert that to edges. So we're going to put in a convert operation there. And what convert will do, it'll con we're going to convert from vertices to whatever this is expecting. And this is going to be expecting edges. So we're converting from vertices to edges here. So here's what we're doing. We've got these vertices. We're growing them. We're converting them to these edges. And then we're deleting those edges. Now we have all of our hexagons and pentagons that we wanted, right? So that was the most difficult part by far of this whole process. 
And maybe I went too granular there, but hopefully you sort of understand how these things work now. And of course you can right click and um, save this uh, alias and we're save assembly preset. And so you can reuse it as a select vertices by, um, or select edges by, or no, select vertices by edge count uh, without having to remake this every time. So there's that. Okay, but let's move on. So we've got those deleted. And now we can sort of fly through the rest of this. Let's do an edge bevel like so and click on our uh, value here. Press C to get my little drag and we'll do something like along these lines. And then we're going to add another delete operator. Delete and this time we're going to delete polygons. And we just want to delete, let me turn it off here. I just want to delete all of these guys, right? So this time I know I have a built-in operator already. We're going to use the one we had uh, modified earlier, select polygons by edge count. So five and six, we're going to get rid of all of those. Starting to look a little bit familiar here. I don't think we need the schematic open anymore. Um, yeah, so now we're just going to do a thicken operator and you can thicken it up to whatever you want, just a little bit probably like that. And then you can also do a set polygon, um, set polygon type there. So set polygon type and to turn this into a uh, Kappa Clark subdivision services, looking pretty cool. And that's what we wanted. And if you want to go back to your original sphere now and up the subdivision level to like four and we will do five even. And then if you sort of walk back up here, we're subdividing, we're deleting, we're beveling, we're deleting, we're thickening, we're sub -dean. And there you go. That's what we we're trying to get. All right, now that we have this set up, let's have some fun with this and some other shapes. So if I just sort of back off here and uh, even hide the sphere and select the base mesh, so I start at the bottom and add a torus or a toroid. And I think I'm just gonna double the size, just make it a little more dense like that. I don't know, maybe 16 on the segments, something along those lines. So they're roughly squarish. And if you remember, our sphere was triangulated, so turning off the sphere, I want to triangulate the torus too, so we'll do a triangulate mesh op like this. And then we can just kind of walk back up, skipping the sphere, walk back up the stack, turning everything back on, delete them, get an edge bevel, delete the polygons, thicken it, and change the polygon type to Catmull Clark, and now we've got, you know, this cool torus shape doing the same thing we had our sphere doing. And we can do additional procedural selection operations on this to make even you know cooler shapes. So for instance, um, I'm actually gonna right click and make these yellow just so we can distinguish this torus stuff from the sphere stuff. And turning off triangulate for the moment, I'm going to change my torus shape. Let's just make the whole size bigger by pressing C and uh, dragging the uh, channel handle here, something like this. More of a ring than a torus and maybe, I don't know, 64 sides. So again, we're getting a little more like uh, squares or square shaped um, polygons there. And then let's do a push operation. So we'll add another operation. We'll do a push operation. I'm just gonna again, make this yellow. And push operation, selection type set to polygon, select the distance. And again, with C uh, pressed, I can just sort of click and drag. This is the push operation right here. Let's do a procedural selection operator on here. So under, you know, on a, a twirl down, so under selection, let's do add selection and do a select by pattern. This would be fun. And so selecting by pattern allows you to select uh, pattern and polygons by the polygon indices, starting with like the first one. So if I say true on the first one for polygon zero and then do false for polygon one, and then that's just going to repeat true for polygon two, false for polygon three, true for polygon four, etc. And you see, I'm just getting every other polygon. Then if I go to push, um, it's actually pushing everything still because, because it's just every other polygon, basically everything gets pushed, right? This one gets pushed and this one gets pushed or the one in between gets pushed. So what we really need to do is get two like blank ones in between, two non-selected polygons in between. So I just need to change up my pattern here. <clears throat> Again, this is sort of the, the power of procedural selection operations. So you can actually use ones and zeros instead of true and false. So I can actually go true, false, false, true, like that. And then I'm getting sort of these two on, two off sort of thing going on here. And so I go to push and start pushing these. I can get this sort of, you know, lumpy ring shape or rigid ring shape. I don't know what you want to call that. Corrugated ring shape, I guess. Um, 
And be, I can actually go right to the triangulate, but before I go and triangulate these, I'm actually going to uh, do another subdivision operation on that, or a subdivide operation. Just another Capital Clark subdivide, so it's a little bit smoother. And then I'll turn on my triangulate, like so. Actually, let me um, take my subdivide and make that yellow. Like, right click, make it yellow. And so here they're triangulated. I'm just going to walk back up the stack here, uh, skipping the sphere. But we go to subdivide, and then delete, and then bevel, and then delete those inner polygons, and then thicken. And then, again, push out um, or change to Capital Clark. And here we've got, you know, a pretty cool looking shape. And all of this can be changed, again, by changing parameters um, down here in our, in our uh, selection operations, by select by pattern selection operations. So, again, it's procedural selection that's creating these procedural shapes or enabling us to create these procedural shapes. So, yeah, that's looking pretty sweet. I actually like this one better than a lot of the spheres. Or maybe we should have done some stuff with this one. So now that we got this sort of idea down, um, why don't I turn that off and turn these previous ones back on and then just sort of walk through a few of these to show how I did it. So actually, let's just start with this one right here. And I'll just do these one at a time. Let me turn everything off. Uh, but I'll turn the plane back on. Uh, but though, so this is just a similar kind of thing, starting with a sphere. Let me just um, turn these off, actually, starting with our sphere. And then we're subdividing it, and then we're deleting those edges like we did before. And this time we're doing an edge split with a gap and creating, you know, all these hexagons and pentagons there. And then pushing them out. And this time they're being pushed um, with a fall off. So there's actually, uh, oh, actually, this is a select by pattern, this one. So I'm doing just a random select by pattern here, true, false, false, true. I just tried something, you can see what's sort of selected. And then those are pushed, and then I'm doing a thicken, and I'm thickening them all the way back down to the base there. So that's how I get that shape. You know, pretty simple, just the same stuff and a little bit of a different order with an edge split in there instead of um, uh, whatever I had before, an edge bevel, I think. And then on this next one over here, what do we got? We start with a sphere, and then uh, is this the one I've got? Yeah, right here. Oh, this one right here. So I'll start with the sphere again, subdivided. Um, an edge bevel right off the bat, and then we'll do a push with a selection operation, I'm sure, on the ingons. So those ingons right there in the middle are pushed out to create that sort of coral shape. And then those ingons are deleted. And then again with a, with a selection operation there for the ingons, then we're thickening. And then what are we doing here? Oh, we're, sub, we're doing a set polygon type to um, Capital Clark. This may be an interesting one to try to find a way to vary the size of each of these cells. Probably would want to do it at this stage, you know, and well, actually probably want to do it at this stage down here. Something around here. Actually, you'd probably want to, yeah, this would be a hard one, sort of. I'm not sure how you do that, but that's something to explore maybe, to try and get a variations on these different uh, sort of polyps or, you know, little sizes there. Um, the next one, uh, oh yeah, this is one's kind of weird, so let me just walk this one back from the beginning. Um, again, a sphere, not very subdivided. And then I'm doing a push with a sort of a procedural selection on the fall off. So it's, it's a texture fall off on the push, and we're using a, a noise texture there just to sort of blobby that up a little bit. So if I turn the fall off off or if I go over here to push and turn yeah can I turn the fall off off I should be able to disable fall off like that just a regular you know push then but if when the fall off here's just you know your regular push but with the fall off on obviously you get a sort of this blobby effect going on and that's subdivided and then I'm beveling and then I'm doing another push but I'm pushing uh, inward this time and I'm grabbing that uh, ingon there that in gone for the push and then I'm doing a spiky on that same in gone and then I'm doing a sub and converting everything to Capital Clark subdivision surfaces and there we go with that one uh, for this last one um, this one is kind of the same principle we just uh, back up on it again it's got a few more in there so we've got a pretty highly subdivided sphere we've got um, Another subdivision on there to get our shapes, and then we've got that delete going on to get rid of the uh, edges on the interior. And then we do an edge split 
like that with a gap. <clears throat> and then I am deleting uh, with the help of a selection falloff. This is a select by falloff. We're using a texture falloff and then we're using a noise pattern in the texture falloff. So this, what you see there in the green is the noise pattern. If I select my noise here and do something like uh, adjust the Y rotation on the texture locator, um, whoops, let me just make sure I'm in item mode and, and channel hold that. You can see different uh, polygons being selected. And it's a little bit easier if I uh, maybe just turn that to zero. It's a bit easier to see with this selected like like that. Anyway, that's changing the selection of the polygon. So you can select by fall off, uh, fall off. So any sort of fall off in this in this uh, particular instance, we're using a texture fall off with the noise for the texture to create a selection to delete just to get rid of these you know guys in a sort of a you know cool organic um, sort of method there. And then I'm going to thicken those guys like that. And then I'm going to bevel them. And here I'm just beveling the back sides, and I'm using a selection operator called select by previous operation. In this case, I'm the previous operation. Let me just uh, hit it, escape twice. The previous previous operation is the thicken operation, and I'm selecting the back sides. So you see the back sides are selected, and those are being beveled. If my uh, selection operation went to the front side, then these front sides would be beveled like that. So. That's another way to procedurally select things, selecting by a previous operation, not sides, backside. And then uh, those are beveled in, and then I'm probably selecting that in gone there to uh, bevel it uh, down a little bit, I'm guessing. Is that what I did? Maybe. <laughs> we'll see in one second. Yeah, selection by, oh, previous operation actually. I'm selecting, oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm selecting. Uh, so I'm selecting my previous operation and the previous operation being the bevel and that front polygon there, you can see it right there. So I could, probably could have done a select by ingon, but that would have selected the front ones as well. So yeah, that's why I did that, to select by previous operation in the front of that previous bevel operation and just to push those down quite a bit. And then I think I did a, few, a little bit more beveling on the top and here you see this beveling on the top like that. So let me turn that off, turn it back on. Um, this is again using a select by previous operation, but I'm going all the way back to that thicken operation down here again, where we first thickened it, and this time I'm, I'm grabbing the front instead of the back and beveling it. And then I'm doing an edge bevel somewhere, probably on these guys here, and I'm using um, a select by previous operation there, and I'm using this thicken operation again, but I'm selecting the sides this time. So again, it's an operation way down here in the stack. You don't have to use the um, absolute previous one for a select by previous operation. You can pick any previous operation in the stack to do that. In that case, I'm using the, the thickened one and the sides to get that edge bevel there. And then I'm just, um, I'm using, I'm doing that to retain the shape once I turn it to a Catmull Clark um, guy again. So there you go. And again, if I just want to go back here to my noise fall off and do something like move my texture locator up uh, 0.5, it's going to change everything, right? So it's going to change what's deleted so it's going to change my entire shape let's uh, let moto catch up here these get pretty heavy after a while um let me just go back here so at some point you're probably going to want to collapse these um you know modeling stacks into um just uh you know flatten them out so it doesn't have to evaluate everything at once but yeah that's how that one is created so Turn them back on here. So yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty fun once you start digging around in here and understanding procedural uh, selection operations, and then just going in and getting these cool procedural shapes. Let me turn my torus back on there <laughs> in the middle, and uh, that's it. That that was a long one. That was a long one. If you sat through this one, I really hope you make something cool <laughs> to make it worth it. All right, thank you. Yum yum.